Good morning, everybody. Jim Feist and Joe Mack. Joe is in New York. I'm in Las Vegas. Joe, I heard you had pretty good weather yesterday, and I hope that continues through the weekend. I see some absolutely horrible weather around the country, and it kind of looks like it's heading in your way. Yeah, that's what we're hearing. We're, in fact, last night I heard the dreaded snow word from one of the weather casters. They said, but probably not till Sunday, and... Uh, on Sunday, there is a Giants home game against the Packers. So if we get a little snow, I'm sure the Green Bay team will be welcoming that. They've played in it before already this year. And, uh, yeah, so we could be getting some nasty weather. We had a beautiful day yesterday weather-wise. But uh, I saw the whole map of the country, and it looks like it's coming west to east. And eventually it's going to get here, and we're going to get some nasty temperatures and weather. And, uh, like I said, we got a giant home game. And... Only the Hardy Giant fans will probably be showing up after a, a seven-game losing streak and a franchise that's really in disarray. Yeah, I think we're going to see a change in. Well, we should see a change in head coach for the Giants. I mean, I don't. I don't think Sherman knows what he's doing. Um, I think the, the young quarterback showed enough this year that I, I personally think he they can work with him. And uh, but you need better coaching. Uh, you know. The last two games that we've seen, that was the uh, Sunday night game and then the Monday night game, Green Bay gets destroyed. You could have turned it off at the first eight minutes. It was over. And you could. the other game was, was Baltimore taking apart the Rams, and you probably that game lasted about four minutes, and you knew who was going to win. You know, it, it's kind of unusual. No, it's very unusual for two quality teams, where you think they're quality teams, in Green Bay and the Rams, to just get destroyed like that in a big game on national TV where you know these, you at least you believe these athletes have some pride and they don't, they don't want to get smashed like that and they come prepared, you know, and the head coaches are preparing their teams. I mean, this is really unusual to have two games like that on national TV back to back destroyed. They were totally destroyed. What is going on? Yeah, no, I'm with you. I mean, it, you, you want a little, into, you know, besides having action on the games and stuff, you'd like to have a little entertainment, and neither one of those games was very entertaining unless you are a big Lamar Jackson fan, and he was just incredible. He was, as a, uh, we were saying before we started broadcasting this, I mean, he was a step and a half ahead of everybody on the Rams. His, uh, his passing is all of a sudden not being questioned. He threw some really nice throws, a couple of real darts. I mean, he threaded the needle a couple of times on touchdown passes. Looked great, but again, that doesn't explain what the Rams were all about. I mean, here they are defending NFC champions with supposedly a defense and the defensive player of the year from the last couple of years, and uh, they looked terrible. They looked unprepared, and I was shocked that Wade Phillips, you know, what? I don't know what the game plan was, and I know the offense did nothing for the Rams. Two field goals. Goff looked his usual sluggish self at quarterback. But, boy, the Rams defense looked terrible. And then you go back to the night before, as you said, I was really stunned. I mean, here the Packers were coming back to the state of California where they had looked so so sluggish against the Chargers a couple of weeks back. Plus, you got the whole Aaron Rodgers coming home, Bay Area kid. I mean, you know, they... they they looked again. They looked like they weren't ready to play. Uh, the 49ers jumped them. Obviously, that defensive line is every bit as good as advertised for the 49ers. And the Packers had another offensive line injury. But, boy, you look at it, and it, it was just stunning, like you said, to have back-to-back primetime games. And the two losing teams not only looked awful, they they looked, to me, disinterested and uh, I don't know. It's, we've had a handful of games like that this year, Jim, in this league, where high-quality teams, and let's face it, I mean, the, the Rams may not be the best team in the NFC this year, but you've got to still put them in the upper dozen teams of the league, them and the Packers, you know, maybe top ten, whatever. They, they, they just laid an egg. And uh, i tell you what bothered me about both of them. In the second half, they, they didn't even look like they were interested in carving out some type of comeback. I mean, no, you know, one or two minute offense, one no huddle, whatever. Run three receivers on one side and just get the ball out to guys. See if you can do something. Boy, they they did nothing. Very, very unimpressed and uh, kind of disgusted. So you know, getting back to us saying 
that the Giants are home this week, the Packers are coming in. You would think the Packers are going to head east and uh, care about this game. I mean, they're in the midst of a struggle, for, you know, with the playoffs and whatnot. But who knows? Some of these teams, when they don't show up, boy, they don't show up. And the Rams and Packers were two recent examples of that. I get, you know, I get the impression about Aaron Rodgers that he's, he's, I, you know, I don't know the guy. I've never spoken to the guy. You just know what you read and what you see. I don't think he's been happy for a long time um, with the coaching and the situation in Green Bay. I know he speaks to it as if he is, but it, you know, they changed head coaches, and you know, I just don't, I just don't see. It. I know they have a decent record, but. I'm I'm not impressed with them. I lost with them the other night. I never thought that they would show up like that. But then again, uh, maybe I was wrong about San Francisco. Um, and then I, you know, the Rams to me, their their management really messed up. They paid they paid four guys too much money, and they don't have any money to pay anybody else. And I think they're really going to have a hard time moving forward. After they paid, I mean, Goff, 130 million with 110 guaranteed. That's absolutely ridiculous. Um, and and because you, you got to put a, a, that type of a quarterback, you have to put a lot of people around him to make him good. Good offensive line, good running back, good wide receivers. He's not the kind of guy like a Russell Wilson could do a lot by himself, uh, which he does because he doesn't have a great offensive line. He has decent. Uh, running backs and the wide receivers are okay but they're not what they were last year when he had Baldwin and stuff but you know when you start overpaying quarterbacks and certain star positions you really start taking away from your offensive line and your other key positions defensive backs etc etc there's a lot of them there's 22 guys you got to pay on just on your regular team and then you go to your special teams you got to have money because there's a cap and, um, you know, the, and then you look at a guy like Lamar Jackson. He is so impressive. But we've seen guys like this before that are very mobile. They're scary because you, you have a hard time defending them. You don't see guys like that all the time. So you you don't have the schemes to stop them. And then John Harbaugh is a good coach, and he puts a lot of people around him, and they built the offense around that guy's talents. And he went to a sports lab in the off season to really learn how to throw a better, better ball because he was having trouble throwing the larger NFL ball uh, like he did in college. So, but the problem is they take a lot of hits. I'm talking about players like Lamar, and they don't last long because you don't get hit by these big guys in the NFL and last very long. And his backup RG three saw that happen to him. Yeah, no, exactly. I tell you, it's it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun to watch Lamar Jackson the way he's playing right now. Uh, but you and I were touching on this. Listen, the Ravens, they right now. I mean, they they are peaking. I mean, they've covered five in a row. They've had some monster showings. I mean, they like we said, they beat the Rams by thirty nine. They beat Houston by thirty four. They beat Cincinnati by thirty six. I mean, they're a machine. But I'll tell you one thing, and maybe I'm an old-fashioned fuddy-duddy, but, you know, they, they better learn, you know, when to celebrate when the way they did with a late-game turnover when they were up, you know, uh, 45-6 the other day. I mean, come on, it's silly. And, and I know they're all juiced up, national TV, they want to show what they got. I mean, that's always a big thing for teams. But, uh, you know, like you said, Jackson, you know, he gets out there and runs. I mean, look, he's going to wind up setting the rushing record, single-season rushing record. They kept comparing him to Vic the other night, and I never thought I'd see a guy that ran the way Vic ran as a quarterback, but this guy is is similar. But you know what? He's not a real big guy, just like Vic wasn't a real big guy. And when you're beating somebody 24 nothing, and your guys are all laughing on the sideline and yucking it up, well, when Jackson, you know, does one of those RPOs and he tucks it and runs, and after six, seven yards, some head-hunting safety knocks him into next week, the Ravens might start thinking twice about some of their little antics. Now, maybe that's just a little side note, but you're right, Jim. He's going he's gonna to take some hits. I mean, he's as fast as lightning, but there's guys that are fast in this league, and there's guys that don't like getting it rubbed in their faces. Obviously, nobody likes getting stuff rubbed, their noses rubbed in the dirt. 
and they're going to they're going to deliver some licks to this guy. And let's face it, <clears throat> they've got to keep him healthy because, like so many teams in this league, they don't have a quality backup. I mean, RG three is just a shell of a shell of what he was. So they don't want to put themselves in that spot. And I was a little surprised. Now I love Harbaugh. To me, he's been one of the two or three best NFL coaches over the last twenty years or so. He's a great coach, great motivator. Loved the Super Bowl team that beat the Niners that year when he beat his brother. But you can't be keeping in your, you know, not only your present day, but your future superstar quarterback when you're up multiple touchdowns and you've got him tucking the ball and running at times. You you can't do it. I mean, it's just, it defies logic and they're going to pay for it sometimes. So that's, that's the downside of the stuff for the Ravens. I can't say anything else downside about them. I really think, and I wrote it for the Jim Hurley Network in a column on Monday before the game, I said, could we be looking at the one and only superpower in this league? And when the game ended, I said to myself, you know what, the Patriots are who they are, but let's face it, their offense is not nearly what it's been. They're counting on this defense, especially that secondary, to basically get them into a Super Bowl this year. That and Brady's, you know, uh, cerebral way of playing. But let's face it, right now the Ravens look like the most well-rounded team I mean, look at, they're a hearty favorite against the 49ers, who are a 10-win team. I think I just read something that said that's uh, either the first 10-1 team that's been a dog in years or oh, one it's, of it's, very it's, few in the last, that, like, 25 years. So that, that the line, Ravens are for real. They're yeah. great, and Jackson is great, but they better uh, they better chill out a little bit. Otherwise, uh, he's going to take a few lumps here. Oh, well, I agree with you. I mean, yeah, we are both old-school guys, and, and we well, we've never seen... We've never seen a mobile quarterback not get hurt. <laughs> it's just, except well, maybe, but he's not as mobile as he he could be. I'm talking about Russell Wilson. There's a guy, you know, knock on wood, he has not gotten hurt in his career. He is mobile. He does run well, but he is really smart about getting hit. He gets down on the ground fast, and he doesn't take those big hits like, a lot of other guys, RG3, I mean, we saw, you know, the hits with Kaepernick when he was playing. We saw them with other players that, that have been around, and they all, they all get hurt eventually because they go after the wheels, and, the, and then, then they knock a knee out or, you know, a hip or whatever. So I hope Lamar stays healthy because I love the way he plays, and it's exciting. He's fantastic. But that this line... <laughs> Against this, a ten and one team is pretty incredible to see it. See them that big of an underdog, but you, who the hell wants to step in front of Baltimore the way they're playing right now? You know they got we got a lot of games. We got some tomorrow. We got three games. We got Chicago, Detroit, B- Buffalo, Dallas, New Orleans, Atlanta. Um, you know we don't know who's going to be the quarterback for Detroit because multiple injury things with Dris Dris Beard with here. But um, you know, we just have we some, and then we got some great, we got great games in college too. We got some big games, Alabama against Mississippi. We got you know the Ohio State game is is huge. Uh, this this good weekend, we got some great stuff going on. It is a, it is a great it is a great weekend, and I got to I got to plug my place here, the Jim Hurley Network. We're putting on our. Uh, Annual Thanksgiving turkey shoot. It's the 34th annual Thanksgiving turkey shoot for the Jim Hurley Network. Folks, you get five days and nights of football winners, basketball winners. All you got to do is call 1-800-323-4453. That's toll-free. Call it today. We'll start hooking you up. We're giving out the games later today for Thanksgiving Day. That's 1-800-323-4453. Or you could go online, Jim Hurley. Dot com. That's Jim Hurley, H U R L E Y dot com. You're right. A lot of, obviously, in the colleges, you got a whole bunch of uh, natural rivalry games, and a, most of them have big meaning. Like you said, Alabama, Auburn. Let's face it, Alabama is still in the hunt for the playoff. It doesn't look like they're going to get there, but you don't know what kind of chaos may happen in the next couple of weeks. Monster game for Alabama. Uh, you've got Ohio State, Michigan. Now that Ohio State, I was very surprised that they got bumped ahead of. LSU last night, strictly, I think, because they beat a better team, Penn State, than who LSU beat, a bad Arkansas team. But if you watch that game last week, Ohio State was not impressive. They're very sloppy on offense. And uh, 
really just never looked like a hot, a real elite team. But they're number one right now, and they're playing Michigan, so that's a big one. Like I said, Jim Hurley Network, we're going to have wall-to-wall winners. And you get it all started, as you said, Jim, tomorrow, Thanksgiving Day. We've got NFL action all day. Bears, Lions, we don't know who's quarterback. Who knows? It might be Eric Hipple by the day he's over for the Lions. They don't know who's going to play. Bills, Cowboys, very interesting game. The Bills have kind of been my team all year. I really thought they were a strong overplay for the year. They've already cashed for people. They've got eight wins. Uh, They're off to their best start since the Jim Kelly days. Great defense, taking points, interesting spot here. You wonder if the Cowboys are are going to suffer a little hangover. They really knocked helmets with the Patriots in the rain and cold in uh, Foxborough last weekend, and you wonder what they've got here. Uh, Zeke Elliott did not have any real explosive plays against the Pats in that game. Let's see if he can do it against the Bills. Front seven, that's very, very good. One of the top three or four defenses in the league. And then you've got the prime time game, Saints Falcons, which, you know, you might say, uh, you, know, you know, be yawning while you're eating your pumpkin pie. But the fact is, the Saints did lose to them uh, a couple of weeks back in New Orleans. Now, New Orleans did not look good in that game, obviously, 26 9. They got, Breeze got sacked a few times. They, uh, they just really didn't hold up very well. A lot of penalties and whatnot. So it's a revenge spot for the Saints, but you got to lay a full touchdown on the road. And uh, even though the Falcons flopped last week, we've seen the Falcons the last couple of years show a little life in these second half of the season games, even when when they're out of it. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what goes on here. It could be a little bit of fireworks. Like I said, last time they played, the teams combined for only 35 points. We're thinking about maybe the over in this spot. So uh, wall-to-wall Thanksgiving games, college game tomorrow night, the Egg Bowl, Mississippi playing uh, Miss State. Big game there because if Miss State wins, they win a bowl game, and what's wacky in that series is the road team has won and covered the last four games. So let's see if Ole Miss, which is like the second or third youngest team in the country, let's see if they can uh, deliver a knockout blow to Miss State's bowl hopes. Uh, short number there. looks a little too short to me. Uh, the home team, Miss State's laying two and a half. We're going to see what uh, that one's all about. So a lot of action, Bears, Lions. Who knows who's quarterback, and the number keeps going up. The Bears are up to three and a half. You got Bills Cowboys uh, in the late afternoon game with uh, the Cowboys just kind of bumbling their way here in a division that looks awful, the uh, NFC East. And then Saints Falcons, you know, let's face it, the Saints, they may not get that number one seed, but they certainly are shooting for the number two seed to get a first weekend by. So they uh, they got a little revenge here, and it should be a fun game, and I think a bit of a high scoring game. Uh, to go along with that. Well, that's a, that's a great recap, Joe. And, and the Jim Hurley Network, give me that phone number one more time. Sure. It's toll-free number 1-800-323-4453. Jim Hurley Network, 34th annual Thanksgiving turkey shoot. Last year, I looked it over. We had a pretty good weekend. We wound up winning a batch of college games. We, I know we won the under in the uh, Saints-Falcons. They did play last year on Thanksgiving night. We cashed with that. Again, it's 1-800-323-4453, Jim Hurley Network, Turkey Shoot. Sign up now. Get in on a good price, and you get five full days of football and basketball. You'll be glad you did. That's great, Joe. And, and listen, happy uh, Thanksgiving to everybody out there and to yourself, Joe, and your family and We'll talk to you again uh, after the weekend. Okay. Enjoy all the turkey. Take care, Jim. (laughs) Thank you. You too.